Ah, oh, Mr. Wu, what do we got here today? I think you mentioned that you might be discussing close-up photography. Yeah. And some copying work yep. using bellows and the different yeah. type of accessories that were made for uh, Nikon film gear back in the day. So now that is something very, very interesting because a lot of us have old uh, negatives and slides that we'd like to copy. So without further ado, uh, what do we got here, Mr. Uh, Wu? Ah, we got the whole plethora of close-up gear. Nearly the entire close-up uh, world here. So, if you are taking the occasional close-up, maybe you want to take a picture of the birthday cake, a bunch of flower, a coin or a stem. So the simplest way is to use one of these close-up lens. They call it close-up lens or the supplementary lens. It's like a magnifying glass. You screw in front of your lens that has got a filter thread. They used to come in a set, close-up set, plus one, plus two, plus three. And you can use singly or you can use in combination. So the weaker one will take you nearer, the, the second one taken even closer and even closer. So what you do is, you just screw it in front and that will reduce the focusing distance. You've got two settings, one is infinity and one is the closer. So at infinity, you get a bigger field of view. So you move up and down until it's called sharp. The good thing about this is it costs you next to nothing, very inexpensive. And it doesn't cut the light. So you don't have to make extra compensation for the light loss. So very handy. So you can get one of these in a set of three or just individual one and you can get it done. The only drawback is you need to stop down substantially to get everything sharp. And even then, if you are taking a printed document, you may get the center sharp, but the edges are blur. So there is a trade-off. But for most purpose and intent, it's good enough. However, if you got a good collection of coins or stems or you really like flowers and uh, you like insects and all this, you might want to get something uh, better. So next up you can get is what you call a set of extension tubes. This is just uh, the front and the rear is the same as your lens mount. And it got a series of three tubes in between and you can mix the combination. So you've got 7mm, 14mm and 28mm uh, you can combine. So if you want the smaller magnification, you take the smaller one. The smaller one, put it together. So you mount the lens dot to dot. And then you find the dot dot to dot and okay you're on the early one don't have any linkage so you have to open up the aperture wide to focus and then before you take the picture you close it down that means it's only good if you uh, have it mounted on a tripod so you can do all this then uh, later on the better ones they put the linkage like here. This one has the linkage. So your, your aperture can remain at any setting. It's always at full. So when you go near and far, make the picture. The metering take care of the through the lens. You will compensate for the exposure increase. In the old days, you either have to get the guidebook like this, Kodak Master Photo Guide. You turn to the page on close-up and they will give you the exposure increase required for the magnification that you want. Or you just remember the formula, 1 plus magnification squared. So one, if you are taking 1 to 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2 squared 4. So the exposure has to be increased by 4 times two stops. 
So you have to do that. But the modern TTL meter take care of that. So with this combination, you can go quite close. With all the three tubes with a standard lens, you can get about life-size reproduction. One inch on the specimen is one inch on the image. So you can go in between. Now, if you like to have continuous focusing, then they make special purpose lenses like the macro lens. So this lens can focus from infinity all the way down to half size. And uh, the optics are corrected to give best results at near distance. So this would be the better lens to use if you are really serious in close up and you want maximum sharpness. This is a 50 millimeter. It got the shorter working distance. If you want a longer working distance, you can go for double the length. This is a uh, hundred mm, so it gives the same magnification, but your working distance is double. The advantage is that it gives you better distance to put your lighting, and also if you are taking butterflies and insects, you don't go so near as to frighten them away. So you stay at a safe distance, not threatening to the butterfly, and you can get good shots. This. Uh, good for serious macro photography or copy work. Now, if you are more ambitious, then sometimes the viewfinder, you can have something like this. High magnification finder. So easier to focus. Or you can add on a magnifying eyepiece. It swings out for composition. It clips down. It magnifies the central portion. So you can make, you can be sure that what you see is pin sharp before you take the picture. So you got a magnifier. Then there are also the angle finder. It right angle. So you look down, and you can select one times or two times, and have adjustment for your eye. So there are two types: one for the rectangular eyepiece and one for the round eyepiece. Same inside, but uh, this is the screw on for the camera that got a round eyepiece. But it's also one times, two times. If you got the ancient one, uh, it's like this. Same, except that this one, the orientation is left to right reverse. This one is correct. Left is left, right is right. So you got the angle finder. Now, if you are even more ambitious, then you go to the bellow system. The bellow is like this. You got the focusing rail at the bottom. Because the magnification is very high, so what you do is you put it on a sturdy tripod, and then you move the whole rig up and down. You preset the magnification you want, lock it, then you do the rear. Then once you got it set, you just move the whole thing up and down to focus. The bellow also allow you to have a vertical orientation. Vertical orientation and then a horizontal orientation. And in order to control the aperture opening, you can do by this lever. So this will control the aperture, you can stop. It stays open. But when you take the picture, you can push it down. So what you can do is, there is a connector on the front. Yeah, here. And the cable release, you get a double cable release. One goes here, one goes here. And when you make the plunge, you close down the lens first before it trips the shutter. The light is measured through the lens, so the metering will uh, set itself. So not, not to worry. So it set itself. Okay, so this usually mounted on a tripod. This is a bellow. So you will rack it all the way up. With a 50 lens, you can get maybe double the life size. But if you put a shorter lens, you put a 35, put a 24, at this maximum extension, you can get three times, four times magnification. You can even extend this with another bellow, connect together. 
Then you double extension, so you can go uh, very, very near. So this is for the more ambitious project. If you have slides negatives, you want to copy them, there is this attachment, so you can uh, put it in. Put the stopper so it won't come out. Then this one clamps onto the front. And now you can put your slide. Put your slide. You can move it up and down, sideways. And then you can copy the slide. Put the light source here. So you can do the copy work. It's the bellow system. Now, for those who want a simpler way of copying the slide without having to get such a massive gear, there are something simpler like this. This is a dedicated slide copier. Here, you got the lens mount put on the body, and here you can set the magnification you want. One life size locket, then this is the fine focus control. You put a slide or the film strip, then you mount it on the body, aim at the light source, and there you can go. You can copy your negative, copy your slide. Now, the normal lenses are designed to be mounted this way. But for close-up, you can actually reverse mount the lens. It gives you better results close-up. So what you do is you get a reversing ring. You screw in like the thread, and then you mount it onto the body, like this, reverse mount. So at this setting, you get almost life size. So you take the picture like that. You get better optical results by reversing the lens. So you've got close-up lenses, different diameter, different size. You have the extension tubes. These are the Nikon tubes. Then I show you something from other company, but it's the same. The, this is the Pentax screw mount without the pin. And this is the later Pentax with the pin. So there is a plunger for the aperture opening and closing. So you got a tube set. Minota has practically every brand, they have their own version. So you got the back, the front, and the intermediate tubes. So all this allow you to take close-up. When you take close-up, it's a different world. You take picture of a pencil sh shaving up close, and you blow it up. You don't tell people what it is, they won't know what it is. So you can see it. there's a small world there. You don't have to have a big studio. Take something into your room, light it up. It be, can keep you occupied for hours. You've got coin collection, currency collection. And you don't want to show this to your friend because it's very fragile and very hard to get. So you just document what you have. Document your collection. Then you can show them your pictures. Now, for very small, precise movement, we have this XZ uh, focus rail. So it allows you to move left to right and front and back. So you can mount the camera here and you can go front and back. You go front and back and sideways, so you can control this way. So that's yes, what we have, the whole range of the close-up gear. Wow, <laughs> that is pretty amazing. Yeah. It, it'll keep you busy for, for hours and days. Yeah. And, and today, it's still relevant as it was yesterday. Yeah, I remember one statement that journalists used to say, if your picture is not good enough, you're not near enough. Exactly. So this they will really take you real near, real close. Wow. I think a lot of the folks would be really interested in this, and they can start collecting and getting it from eBay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's not very expensive, is it? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> so, and you, know, you can use it. These are all the film camera, mm -hmm. but you can mount it on the digital camera. Just change the body, and everything else will work. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Wu, thanks yeah. a lot. Welcome. Another piece of information. Boy, they just love all your, <laughs> all your uh, devices and such from back in the day. So, can't wait till uh, next week. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye.